So, it's been a while. Finally starting to build things again. Here's a project that I've been working on for quite a while. I've actually modeled it up. Tubing for a bicycle. We have to bend it. And specifically, the chain stays and the seat stays. We have to be able to bend the tubing to get around the tire and everything else on there. Now in the past, I actually got these from BFS, Bike Fab Supply. I sent him a drawing of what I needed and he went ahead and bent them for me. Um, since a tubing bender is quite a large investment I haven't made yet, it was actually a really good option. So I sent him drawings, he sent these back and they fit perfectly and we're all ready to go. So here is Chainstay sub-assembly. This one's from the Chainstay yoke video. But you can see down here, since we have this yoke, we only need one bend. Nice and easy. So here's the idea. Anyway, I'll probably put up a better drawing on the screen here so you can see it more clearly. But basically, we're going to make use of a shop press, like a hydraulic, mine's from Harbor Freight, shop press. But I think, if this works out all right, even just a bench vise, you'll be able to, you know, go ahead and give it the squish it needs. It's, it's a press bending setup, which is a little different than most tubing benders that you see. It's kind of a, a draw bender, I guess it's called, or a rotary bender. I'll put some pictures up on the screen. But press bending has a couple of advantages for what we're trying to do. The first advantage being how simple it is, because on the bike, like on this here, on the chainstay, if I'm not mistaken, this is actually, I want to say only around like a 10 degree bend, something like that. So not much. You know, we don't need to be able to bend a full 180 or anything crazy like that. And then seat stays are a bit more. There's actually two bends here. There's another one that's only around like eight degrees or so. And then this one, actually measure it. That's about 35. 35 degrees here. And really, having your seat stays bent like this at the time, it made the construction of Valkyrie easier. But you can get rid of this bend if we do some other clever stuff up at the seat stays, like another yoke, or even just a bridge and two straight pieces of tubing. But anyway, somewhere around 35 degrees is what I designed this for. And if all goes to plan, we may be able to get a higher bend out of here also. But then of course you run into issues of, you know, bending the tube, you may end up starting to kink it and things like that. So we'll try it out, we'll see what happens. This is all just kinda speculative right now. But if it works, it's gonna be awesome. The way I designed this, we have to be able to cradle this tube. You know, it's a round tube, obviously. And on these two sides, it's just a straight die, which that's pretty easy. You can take something like this, right? So if you have a bridge port or have access to one, you can get a round nose end mill like this. Or I think they call them a ball nose end mill. You can tell I'm not a machinist, but this here, if we run it through a piece of aluminum, will give us that nice half round profile. So that's the easy part. The hard part is this die in the center because it has to match the curve and on a manual mill, you can't really do that. I mean, you could say if you had like a rotary set up or something like that, you could use one of these. Lots of people have done that, you know, where the piece actually rotates underneath what you're cutting and then you can get that, you know, your center line radius. What I'm hoping is that 3D printing out of plastic will come to the rescue here. So, I have these. I just bought myself a 3D printer. Um, it's a Ender 3V2, Christmas present to myself. But here's that center die. 
Let's see if we can get focused on it. This is the tricky part, right? So the big question though is that is a 3D printed plastic part going to be strong enough to actually bend this tubing for, you know, 35 degrees or whatever. You know, really nice fit actually. I haven't bothered to calibrate the printer or anything, but that's a snug fit. I like it. It's the first time I've actually had these in the shop with pieces of tubing. So, the way it's going to work, you can probably already see it from the side view. We have the two dies. These are just going to be free to pivot. And then this one in the middle is going to be attached to the press and come in and squoosh it down. This is a prototype. It's probably going to explode on the first go. We'll see. I'm still new to 3D printing, so all the settings like infill and types of plastic and print orientation and all that is new to me. But this was something like a 50% infill. I added some extra material for the side walls and the top and bottom wall thickness. Same thing on these. And uh, this is PETG, which apparently, from what I've seen online has a lower ultimate strength than PLA but it has a little more ductility so maybe that'll help I don't know like I said we're we're gonna try this out and I'm expecting failure so anything more than failure is gonna be a success but let's go ahead and make this little frame to support it it's very simple we just need two supports and something to hold it together and then we can We'll see what happens. So this is just some aluminum bar stock that I have. Um, this is going to be really rough because again, I'm just kind of, I want to throw something together, try it out. It's two and a half by quarter. Yeah, quarter. I may just end up welding this together again, just to make it easier for now, but we'll come up with a better solution for, you know, something in the future. So I think we're, the last left off on the channel was putting power to the shop here. Shop is still nowhere near, you know, fully operational, but it's getting there. Got some projects to do. Alright, we'll just do it this way. Now, speaking of powering the shop, this is now a uh, solar-powered bridge port. That's kind of cool. We'll see how the welder does. Uh, I've done some small steel already, because right now I only have 115 volt power in here. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that goes, running the welder on a AC to weld these up. Yeah, that might work. Man, forgot how much fun metalworking is. I've been in here for like 15 minutes and I already hurt myself. I just have to weld them up. Something like that. This is about, I think it's actually exactly one inch. It needs to fit in there. Found this guy. We'll just set it down in there. And that'll give us a little extra room. Which will be fine. Now, I'm also running my welder off of 115 volt, so I'm definitely not going to have enough amperage to to weld this, you know, properly. But we will give it a go and see what happens. I feel like once once everything gets hot enough, I should be able to get something that resembles a, a good bead. Because that's definitely something on the project list is to actually get proper 240 volt, you know, split phase in here. But that's that's a little ways off. I'm talking loudly now because the welder's a little noisy. 
It's telling me I have up to 125 amps. I'm not sure the inverter will like that. Yeah, inverter didn't like that. Alright, 85 is going to be our magic number. And we'll see if we can get it done. This might help a little bit. that resembles a weld. Well, the shop is getting a little smoky, but I put it on this piece of wood so it wouldn't, the table wouldn't suck all the heat out of it. It's working though. should do it. Well, we got it done. Definitely not pretty, but it should work. I don't actually have the right hardware for these pins yet, so probably just going to have to improvise for now and we'll give it a give it a try. Now, I also designed this with putting a steel plate on the back in mind. For now, again, I think I'm just going to find something flat to spread the load out and we'll see what happens. See if we can see if we can squish it. Yeah, we'll do it this way. See if we can break some plastic. Ooh. Those are not good sounds. Ooh, I think it's working. Expect that side to break actually. That's actually pretty promising. I was able to start the bend before we had a failure. This piece was the one I was concerned about. And it looks like it did just fine. This one, obviously. Did not having this Allen key in there probably created a big big point load on it. But yeah, it may be hard to see that, but there is a bend there. But it was interesting. I actually, you know, I felt it take the strain. And then I actually felt the tube start yielding, and we did get a little bend, so that's that's good. We'll just have to figure out these. You know, and I was even thinking also with this block here, just to make it even more accessible for these, there's always the Paragon 2 blocks, right? So it may be possible to adapt those to make this work. We'll have to go back to the drawing board, see what we can come up with. <laughs> 